What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Cyber Realm. So today we take a look at two banners in SAOMD. It has been a long time since I last made a video like this, so I decided, hey, you know what? It's time to take a trip down memory lane and do one of these anal analysis videos. Now, for the past analysis videos, I have been going easy on Bundai, okay? I have been taking it nice and simple. But today, today I'll be going to the real numbers. We go into the stats, the details of every single character. So the two banners we're looking at, and I've got my script right in front of me, actually. I've I've done so much research uh, just for the sake of presenting this video. So we got Rulers of the Human Empire um, banner, as well as, this is a long name, Summer Brings the Roaring Waves Part 2 banner. So as we know, this was the ranking event banner, and then the Rulers of the Human Empire was actually for the B.O.B. banner, or the B.O.B., which, by the way, can I just say, is the stupidest thing ever if they don't have dedicated servers. It's not a contest to see who has better skills. It's a contest to see who has a better connection. And whoever's the host generally has an upper edge. Anyways, that's besides the point. I'm just very salty because it took me a very long time to reach rank 100. And I did, by the way. So, let's talk about the rules of the Human Empire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first showcase the uh, the actual characters in the SS3s, bef or SS3s before I actually jump into the stats. So I'm going to be going easy, then going hard on the, uh, the, the Bundais themselves. So, can I just say, by the way, the artwork, they're good. Um, but also, oh, one more thing, okay? This is reuse animations. I, at least, I don't know about Berkuli since I never actually tested out the other version of Berkuli, uh, but I do know for a fact that the Administrator, which I did level up to level 80, uh, not this one here, but the other one, it, this is a reused animation. It looks a little bit more detailed than the other one, but it's still the same thing. I feel like there's a copy and paste involved. Yeah, just just a little bit salty about that, but ABEC, like the drawing, the artwork, makes it so much more worth it. I'm still salty about the, the the animations, though. So, anyways, um, if we take a look at it, the Berkuli has 15 hit SS3, and um, Administrator has a 14 hit SS3. Now, under first appearances, I actually assumed that Berkuli was the better choice in this banner, but I was so wrong. After digging into this, I realized Administrator is leagues above the Berkuli, and um, I'm sad to say that uh, Administrator has always been the one. She has always been the one. Okay. So let's jump into the details of the SS3s themselves, or actually details of the characters themselves. So, Berkuli is a non-elemental one-handed sword character with a barrier times one at base SS3, but limit break four times and you get barrier times two. He, both of these characters do guide with, or do present you with a damage up for all your team members. And I would say that's pretty good, but I haven't tested out how much the attack value increases by, because that's a little bit hard. The damage calculation is not that uh, simple. And again, since all of the banners nowadays has to have auto-parry, because for some reason Bundai realized that all of us can't parry. Okay. And uh, both of them have MP cross link, so... It's going to be pretty nice, but Cooley stands at 4,314 base attack at level 80, which we assume, in our estimation, to go up to 5,211 attack at level 100. And again, like I said, he has 15 hit on his SS3, which is one higher than the Administrator right here. Administrator stands at 4,481. You can already see that this is actually already higher than the Berkuli's base attack, which is surprising. But you know, one-handed sword has more HP to make up for that, right? But who cares about HP? Who who cares about HP? Um, so let's jump into uh, the more stats into whether or not Berkuli is worth scouting for. So Berkuli is rank... He doesn't even place it in the top 10 rank for his uh, one-handed sword class. So his attack is low, to say the least. He is ranked 7th in weapon class and barrier units. So if you add the filtering to just barriers and non mental one-handed swords... Or sorry, if you limit the filter to just one-handed swords and barrier units, he's ranked 7th. He's ranked 2nd, however, for non elemental one-handed sword. So, yay? Kind of? He's a, in, So my final verdict for Berkuli is that he's a mediocre unit with a decent attack, but outclassed by most of the other versions, including the other version of himself, actually, uh, which is, I think, called the Future Slicing Knight Berkuli. And uh, yeah, other barrier units are just better than him. But now we look take a look at the real, the real deal. The High Pontifex, I think that's how you pronounce it, Pontifex Administrator. So the Dark... 
it, she is a dark element unit. She has a she's a rapier unit, and she has a barrier just like Berkuli. Of course, let me break four times, and you get barrier times two. But who's gonna take the effort to let me break four times, right? Just just saying, just just putting that out there, you know. Uh, she also has the attack up auto SS3. Which oh yeah, that's actually one thing I forgot to mention. They both actually switch into an SS3 when you normal switch. So I guess I call that auto SS3. They also have uh, she also has auto ah uh, bleh I can't English. She also has auto parry and an MP crosslink skill. So her base attack is 4481, but at level 100 she gains she goes up to 5413. So pretty high attack. She has a 14 hit SS3. She is ranked number 1 out of all rapier units. She has the highest damage or highest attack value of all rapier units. That puts her at supreme number one. No wonder she is the administrator. Okay. Anyways, I feel like she cheated that number herself. So, my verdict, incredible unit boasting the highest attack in her respective weapon class, but with good scaling to boot. So, meaning every time she limit, she's limit breaked, that value actually goes up differently for every different for every character. So, she actually has good scaling. And also, she has a decent hit count and easy to cross-link with the barrier. Uh, so, yeah. What am I going to talk about about the weapon? So, we have... The revival weapons for the Enhanced Car Incarnate Time Splitting Sword and the Silver Eternity. So let's talk about these two. Uh, they do have the new battle skill 3 added, which is incoming damage minus 20% of multi. Um, kind of ish, meh. Up, uh, it's got its pros and cons. So the Enhanced uh, Splitting Sword, Enhanced Incarnate Time Splitting Sword, is uh, has a max attack of 1550 at level only at R4. Uh, so that is actually ranked below 10th. It's not even in the top 10 in terms of attack value for all one-handed swords. And the extra mitigation, I'm not too sure if it keeps your combo, but I feel like it doesn't. You, like, you have it at all times. The other ones was that you get a mitigation when you use a skill, but this one is you, you have it at all times. So, pros and cons, debatable. It's only 20% mitigation, so do you really need it? Also, its attack value is also beaten by its counterpart, so just a normal time-splitting sword was actually better. Y yeah, Enhance Incarnate, right? Somehow it becomes weaker after it's enhanced. And the Silver Eternity, once again, is the uh, the most attractive one out of them all. It has 1605 attack at R4. Again, 20% mitigation damage in multi. Ab agree, disagree, it's probably useless. But then again, argue with me down in the comments below. So it is actually the third highest attack value rapier in well in the rapier category, and my verdict it's a superior rapier with extra skill, um, kind of boosting your multiplayer potential, but not so much. It's not gets nothing to uh, to kind of like put off since it is the third highest, making it worthwhile scout if you are in the market for a rapier. Uh, so yeah, that's my verdict on this banner. It took some time to look over all this, but. I say it was worth it. I at least found out that Administrator was a better pick out of out of the banners, but I mean that's only dark units, right? So now we turn our focus to the Summer Brings the Roaring Waves Part Two. And oh boy, I looked into this because it was three units, and it took me a while to do all this. It has the Cancel Burns and Crit Guaranteed and Skill Use. So the, these are kind of this Cancel Burn is really only useful for this ranking event. That's the only reason why you want it, but it can be re easily replaceable by a mitigation unit. So let's talk, let's go over these banners. Enough talking, all right? So we're given the Asuna, the Leafa, and the Yuki in this banner. They're all Water Element. They all have a attack buff to their par combination partner when you switch them in. They have auto parry, of course they have to, and the attack cross link skill. So unfortunately, they don't have the MP link, but their weapons make up for that. So I'll get to that in a bit. They also come with a barrier times one. This one does not get times two when you unlock them to fourth star. So uh, we'll go into more detail. So let's take a look at the SS3, shall we? I didn't actually look at this yet. I was too busy looking at the stats. So let's take a look. Uh, alright, Asuna has, if I remember correctly, all of them has 15 hit on their SS3. I know I auto-attacked once at the beginning, so that's why it's gonna go to 16, yeah. Okay, so it's like she's surfing. Not too bad, alright, cool. Uh, let's get Yuki in here, and let's see her SS3. Okay, she throws a beach ball, throws two, throws three. Oh damn, how many beach balls you got? And she turns into a beach ball herself? What? <laughs> Wait, I wanna see that again. Throws, throws, throws another one, and becomes a beach ball herself. And just... What? <laughs> you know what this reminds me? It reminds me of the ring that used to do the Beyblade spinning in the air, but... The damn! 
But, uh, damn! I didn't think anyone would want to turn into a beach ball themselves and just throws himself at the enemy. Okay, uh, she's trying to run away from a shark while the shark is attacking, and then she throws coconuts down at the enemy. Kind of lackluster. Honestly, I mean, out of all these SSRs, I find Asuna being the most bland. I'm not gonna lie, like, this one is running away from sharks, and then you throw coconuts from a tree. Okay? That's pretty cool. And then you have Yuki who just tosses herself at the enemy for, for, for whatever reason. And also just chilling on the chilling on the surfboard. That that's that's really all it is. <laughs> I, I gotta say, that this this SS3 makes me laugh. It's just pretty nice. Okay. So let's jump into the the, the, the detailed character analysis. So Asuna at a level eight I can't actually go into the details, but let's go ahead and Oh wait, I can, never mind. I thought it was going to be the single banner. Okay, so Asuna has 4445 as her attack at level 80. She goes up to 5370 for level 100. And like I mentioned, she has 15 hit on her SS3 just like everyone else does. She is ranked number 4 out of all rapier characters. She is second in terms of barrier units plus rapier units. So if you filter it to just rapier and barrier, she's ranked second. And she is ranked number 1 for all water rapier characters. Good character. So my my verdict is good unit with an excellent attack, decent hit count, with a barrier to help in a tight spot. Simple enough. Where the scout if you're in for a rapier unit. Next we have the Resort Live Yuki. She is a water dagger unit with 4433 as her base level 80 attack, which goes up to 5355 estimated value at level 100. Take give or take like 15 values in between. Uh, she does have 15 hit SS ray as well in her combo. These it's, uh, it's also important to mention that they're not combination partner with water element their combination partner is with like each other like character specific so eh? i i don't really know there's bound to be other water units that that's also takes up like water asana or water leafa probably i mean i can think of a couple so it's not all that bad if you don't get two units in this banner it's possible if you have the other banners, but um, in my opinion, I like element specific better because you're gonna be constructing a team out of the water elements, right? It wouldn't make sense to make make up a team with different elements. Uh, you're kind of losing out on that. So uh, uh, I got sidetracked. So uh, she is ranked second in terms of all the daggers. There aren't that many six star daggers in the first place, so she is ranked second. Uh, she is ranked number one in terms of the dagger and barrier class. Uh, she is ranked second again in terms of the water daggers. Uh, or Water Elemental Daggers. So, my verdict is an excellent unit for the daggers. Uh, however, due to the lack of versatility of daggers, the unit stands in average in comparison to the other classes. It's give or take. If you want a dagger unit, sure, now's the time. Or if you just want Yuki in general, go ahead, go for her. Next, we have Beach Vibes Leafa. You know, the first time I looked at that name, I said Bleach Vibe. <laughs> Bleach Vibe. Leafa. Yes, I know, correct me. I'm sorry, my eyesight's are bad. Um, she is a Water Lance unit. Oh, yeah, her source skill is called Panic Island. I see why now. Okay, so I got sidetracked again. So her base level 80 attack value is 4241. Not very high, but at level 100, she gains an attack value of 5124. Give or take, that is an estimation. Uh, she does have 15 hit on her SS3 once again. Rank number one, however, in all rape or sorry, all Lance classes. So meaning, there's no need for me to look elsewhere. This is the best Lance character right now. As of right now. Uh, it does come with a uh, barrier unit, so it does come with a barrier itself, plus Lance has quick parry, so if you know how to use it, pair that up with like the, the highest attack Lance unit right now, you have a pretty solid team. So my verdict, best unit for the Lance class in terms of utility, Lance has the quick Lance parry combined with a barrier to help you in case you mess up. It makes the Beach Vibes Leafa a unit well worth to scout for. That is my final verdict. And yes, I am reading off the screen because I can't remember the script. I spent too long making this. And I'm going to use... You know I'm going to use it damn well. Okay. That's going to be all for the units uh, analysis. And I'm not going to scout for any of them. Because as of this moment that I'm recording this video, I found out that Bundai is going to be releasing more bait banners before the one comes out. Including the... The Shinon with her TM at. Her sniper rifle. I hate you, Bundai. Anyways, so I'm going to be saving my MDs for that, and I'm probably going to end up whaling, scouting, whatever it is. It's going to take a bit, but I'm probably going to end up spending some money on this game after all. Uh, 
Uh, it hurts, it hurts, but it is what it is. Bundai knows how to bait its, ba bait its players. At least they didn't get me on this banner, thank god for that. I, I made up for it with my mitigation units. Anyways, at the end of the video, I do have a short clip of my ranking event run. Um, I actually, you know what? Hold on, hold that thought. I might not even put it on there, depending on how long this video has been going on for. Oh my god, it has been going on for way too long. So I may not actually put it up after all. So, anyway, so, um, that's gonna be it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope that brought more statistic or analysis to the vi to the characters, to which one you should go for. And, yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like to give me a thumbs down. If you didn't think that this was worth your time and I've just wasted 15 minutes of your time, please let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!